Well, good evening, everybody. Um, it's Chris here from the Whistle Stop Cafe in Mirror, Alberta. Um, there's a couple important things to talk about tonight. Uh, over the last few days, I've been getting dozens, um, possibly up to hundreds now, of messages from people asking me, uh, wh what do I do? My employer is about to mandate that we have to be vaccinated. We don't want to be vaccinated and we're going to be fired. Now I'm getting this from oil field workers, nurses, doctors, um, you name it, restaurant workers. It's not just one group of people, it's everybody. So the first thing I wanted to say to everybody right now, for all you who are watching, uh, who don't want to take the vaccination, you are not alone. You're going to hear, oh, 80% of Alberta has been vaccinated. Everybody wants this vaccine. Why don't you? What's wrong with you? Just be like everybody else. That's bullshit. 80% of people in Alberta may have got the vaccine. <clears throat> but I can guarantee you that at least half of those who have got it already didn't get it because they wanted to. They got it because they're pressured into doing it. They want to travel. They're worried about their job. Um, they want to visit their family and their family has asked them to vaccinate. There's all sorts of reasons why people are setting their own, their own uh, um, desires for their control over their health. They're, they're setting it aside and they're doing what other people want. Um, and I, I'm not here to judge anybody. Uh, for that and and nor should you for those of you who have been vaccinated i don't care it doesn't make any difference to me if you want to get a vaccine or if you want to smoke cigarettes if you want to drink if you want to do drugs i really don't care until it affects me and now this vaccine mandate is affecting me my family's being pressured into taking the vaccine i'm being pressured Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people across Canada are being pressured into taking this vaccine. Can anybody on this live right now remember a time when people were pressured into taking a medical intervention like this? I can't. I do remember a few years back there was uh, some measles outbreaks in, in the uh, greater Vancouver area. And there was a big campaign to uh, try and force the people who were actually anti-vax into doing what everybody else was doing. It failed. Couldn't be done. Um, the courts pretty much ruled that those people are responsible for their own health and they make their own decisions about their bodies. And it disappeared. Uh, it, it was about, I don't know, maybe six months or a year that this was going on. <clears throat> and we never heard anything about it again. Until now. So what this is doing to our province and our country and all over the globe, and thank you very much for tuning in from overseas. That's amazing to see people from Australia and Ireland on here. Um, thank you. There is a huge divide being created by the government and the media. It's not, uh, it's not a valid divide. It should never be happening, but it's happening, and they're doing it. These are the people who tell us that... Uh, they want to bring people together and, and they want to do something for the country um, as, as, a, as a government political party. We all need to stick together. We're in this together. The same people that are saying we're in this together are now blatantly discriminating against those who don't want that medical procedure. And I'm not going to stand for it. Just to make this clear, uh, the Whistle Stop Cafe in Mirror, Alberta, will never, ever ask you whether or not you've been vaccinated. Pardon me. We might ask you, but we're not going to choose or we're not going to tell you that we won't serve you because you've either done it or not. It's none of our business. It's none of our business if you have, if you're HIV positive. It's none of our business if you have any other communicable disease. Our society has always been taught to accept people. Um, we're responsible for our own safety and our own health. 
first and foremost. And then we're taught to um, make sure that other people around us are safe. That's not happening right now. What's happening is we're being told that we have to do we, we have to do things to our body to keep other people safe. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, but that should never happen in a country like Canada. Ever. Our Prime Minister is possibly the most divisive leader we've ever seen in this country. Uh, he actually said in a stern, I'm your parent and I'm the boss tone, that if you choose not to get vaccinated then you're not going to be allowed to sit on a bus or a train next to somebody who's vaccinated and get them sick. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds to me a little bit uh, counterintuitive. If you've received your vaccines to be safe from COVID or anything else, why do you care what other people do? If you believe so strongly in this vaccine, why are you trying to force other people to take it? It's none of your business. Be confident that the vaccine you received will protect you as advertised. Although it doesn't, you can still get COVID, transmit COVID. It, it, it doesn't seem to uh, make that much of a difference. <clears throat> If it did make a big difference, then why would, any, why would anybody be concerned? So this may be a fairly lengthy live stream. i got a lot to talk about. I'm going to try and keep it short, but that never happens. But please, uh, take a few minutes out of your day and watch this to the very end. What I'm going to say towards the end of this live stream is extremely important. It's important for those of us who believe in COVID, don't believe in COVID, believe in vaccines, don't believe in vaccines, whatever. It's important for every single person in Canada and actually across the globe. Um, this isn't happening just in Canada. It's happening everywhere. There are countries that are pushing back and they're pushing back hard. Um, I'm hoping that Canada can do the same. If not for you, if you don't push back for you, maybe you should be thinking about pushing back for your neighbor or your friends. There's, vaccinated, uh, there's a lot of vaccinated people out there that don't agree with what's happening in Canada right now. They don't agree with these forced, these forced, uh, pardon me, not forced. They're not forcing vaccinations. They're just telling you you can't travel, work, go to the grocery store, um, go to the spa, go to a gym if you're not vaccinated. That's forcing you to do something. Taking away every part of your life, if you don't do something that the government says you should do, is coercion. We're not going to stand for it. I was in Grand Prairie this weekend speaking to a group of people, a wonderful group of people. I actually was a little bit nervous because that's the most people I've ever spoken in front of. That was about, probably, the room was 400, uh, a 400 person occupancy and there was people standing. So I know there was at least 400 people there. Those people are friends and neighbors with these issues they're having. All these people that are messaging me asking, what do I do? My employer is, is going to force me to be, be vaccinated or they're going to fire me. Well, we have a plan. Before I get into that, I told you earlier that uh, you're not alone in your discomfort. Sorry about that. Rural internet at its finest. So what I was saying is, you are not alone. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people out there who feel the same way as you. Um, there's thousands of people that are ready to stand up and push back against this garbage. I've heard a lot over the last little while about uh, the resources that Alberta has. Um, we have all these resources and we're, 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 uh, we're important to Canada because of these resources. Do you know what our most important resource is in Canada? It's not agriculture. It's not energy. It's not uh, manufacturing. It's people. People are our most valuable and most important resource across the, uh, across, uh, the, uh, the country. They're also the most powerful. They say it takes 10 to 15% of a community to rise up to enact change. Well, now's the time. Now is the time to rise up and get things changed. 
I said over the weekend that people should be emailing their elected representatives, uh, phoning them, protesting in front of their constituency, constituency offices or their electoral district offices. Um, make some noise. That's the only way things are going to change. <clears throat> that brings me to my next point. Why the left always wins. The left is historically very, very well organized. The right, <clears throat> not so much. And I'll explain why. As a uh, right-wing leaning conservative, and I don't even like to call myself right or conservative anymore because uh, I don't seem to fit those ideals. But as a person who leans right more than left, um, I'm independent I believe in personal responsibility and personal accountability. And because of that, I tend to blaze my own trail, as do most other right-leaning people. And that really shows in our government and our political parties. Right now in Alberta, we have uh, one, two, two left-leaning um, political parties. We have five or six right-leaning parties. And there's a reason for that. It's because the right is more independent. We believe more in doing things ourselves and looking out for ourselves and then our neighbors than uh, um, putting our, our differences aside and working as a team, collectively. The left, on the other hand, um, they tend to have, now I'm not calling all, the le all people on the left Marxists or communists, but they have Marxist ideals. They believe in the greater good. It's a hive mentality. You can see that in Trudeau's Liberal Party. If anybody steps on a line on the Liber Liberal Party, they're out. He's got a stranglehold on them. He doesn't allow any dissent. And the reason for that is because he knows that as a party, he has to present a unified front in order to make change and keep power. And he's done a very good job of that. He panders to those 10 or 15% of the population who tend to make noise. Protesters, activists. Uh, that kind of thing. Those 10 or 15% of our country are setting the path for the rest of us, and we need to stop that. Imagine if 20% of right-leaning folks across Canada, and it's already happening, as you can see in Nova Scotia, imagine if we stood up and spoke out and made some noise, got active politically, uh, ran for office, um, handed out flyers, whatever. We would make a tremendous difference in this country. We could take the country back. It's ours for the taking. That's all we have to do. Use our voices. If you can't use your voice, share mine. Share this link with your friends. Share this link with your friends who, think, who you think will disagree with me. Um, I would love this to reach more people that disagree with me because maybe there will be something that I say that actually touches them in a way where it helps them to understand where we're coming from. When it comes to our rights and freedoms, there is no right and there's, there's no left. There's free and there's oppressed, period. I said over the weekend that one of the biggest lies we were ever told was that our forefathers um, fought and died for our freedom so that we wouldn't have to. That's a lie. The truth is our forefathers fought and gave their lives for our rights and freedoms so that we had the opportunity to continue fighting for them and keep them. It's not a one-shot deal. There's always going to be people who want uh, to take power, to take control, take away our rights and freedoms, indenture us to the system, whatever. It's, it's never going to stop. Every day in this country and across the globe, people are fighting for their freedoms. You can't stop. You always have to be moving. Right now in Canada, I described uh, where we're at as being in a flat spin, like in an airplane. We stop moving forward. We lost our control services, services, sur surfaces. We're spinning out of control and we're going to crash. And it's going to take a lot of power and a lot of uh, procedural wrangling to get out of that spin and get back on track. But we can do it if you and your friends and your family and everybody you know stand up and make it happen. <clears throat> because of my position on this, uh, I've become the... I don't want to say target because that implies victim. Um, I have become the, I don't know, I guess a, 
the target of all sorts of personal attacks. There's people out there saying disgusting, ridiculous things about me. Um, they're taking a little bit of truth and mixing it with lies, and I expected that. Um, I, I, I knew that would happen. It happens every time somebody speaks out. Those who... Oh, hey, cat. I am not a cat. <clears throat> Those who speak out, put themselves in the public eye, they open themselves up to that kind of thing. So for those of you who um, see what's going on, on on Facebook pages and the things people are saying to me, uh, please maintain your dignity, be polite, and uh, don't let's 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 stop the division. Uh, we're not going to win any of those people over by arguing with them on Facebook, by attacking them, by attacking their character, by creeping their profile and saying things about them because of a picture on their Facebook. Uh, the only way we're going to reach those people is by staying calm, level-headed, um, telling them how we feel, what we're thinking, and why we want to do this. And the most important part of why is so that we can maintain a country where we can all be free, we can be different, um, we can not agree on everything, but we can be free to do so. That's what Canada is all about. The freedom to disagree with your neighbor. And still live your life. Still go to the grocery store or go to work if you don't want to get a vaccination. That's what this country is about. So, <clears throat> another thing I spoke about this weekend. And uh, stay tuned because the, mo the most important part of this live is coming up shortly. Uh, the other thing I talked about was what we're going to do to try and stop or slow this uh, forced vaccination mandate that employers are handing down. Number one, I'm going to be calling out every business, every uh, entity that comes out and says that they're going to force their employees to get vaccinated or they're going to fire them. Maple Leaf Gardens, you're disgusting. Um, the Calgary Flames, they're demanding that uh, all of their staff or patrons at their establishments be vaccinated. I won't be going to any Flames games, and I, I certainly won't be turning on the TV and watching the Flames. Um, these restaurants that are preemptively virtue signaling and posturing by saying that they're going to force people to show va proof of vaccination before they serve them, get bent. I'm going to make sure everybody knows who you are. I'm going to say your names publicly, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell people, don't go there. Remember what I said before? The most valuable resource we have in this country is people. And the people aren't going to, they're not going to take this laying down. They're not going to take this sitting down. They're going to stand up and they're going to hit you where it hurts in your pocketbook. If you want to discriminate against people because they haven't gotten the vaccine, you can watch your profits tank. Because it's not just the unvaccinated they're going to be uh, not, not patronizing your business. There's going to be vaccinated people not patronizing it too. Because they don't agree with it either. So one of the reasons we're going to, or pardon me, one of the ways we're going to deal with that is we are going to start a non-profit, a not-for-profit organization. Um, now, no, we're not turning the whistle stop into a non-profit. Um, no, this non-profit isn't me. It is going to be a registered entity with the uh, government of, of Alberta. And the purpose of this entity is going to be to raise funds, retain lawyers, and start fighting this stuff in court. All these people who've approached me, messaged me, and asked me, what are we going to do because our employer is going to force us to get a vaccination or, or they're going to fire us? We're going to sue them. We're going to sue their pants off. We'll take it right to the Supreme Court if we have to. Um, it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of time. I've already told my sister that I'm probably not going to be doing much of the Whistle Stop Cafe for, any, for the foreseeable future. We have a big job ahead of us. Um, it's entirely possible that I'll lose the place because I can't, you know, I, I have to work there. Otherwise, I don't earn any money. Um, but this is way more important than a job or a house or a car or whatever. So that's what my path is going to be for the next while until we make some progress or until somebody else can, can uh, take over for me. So all of you people out there that have been asking me, what are we going to do? We're going to tie these 
employers up in court. We're going to publicly shame them for discriminating against people. We're going to hit them where it hurts in their pocketbook by not patronizing their establishments. We're going to network. We're going to talk to like-minded people or even people not of the same mind who don't agree with the discrimination. And we're going to make sure that the businesses who value our freedoms, who respect people's choices, are the ones that succeed. That is the most powerful thing we can do. These businesses, Maple Leaf Gardens, they don't care if you're vaccinated. They care about their bottom line. If they thought they were going to make more money by saying that uh, they don't care if you're vaccinated or not to come to the, uh, the establishment, that's what they do. But they think they're going to make more money and be in a better position financially with, and, and look better to their shareholders if they pander to this BS vaccine divisive bullshit. Prove me wrong. So, um, I have a lot of work to do to set that up. Uh, I've approached some lawyers already. Uh, they're looking into scheduling and seeing if they can get something going. Um, I have another lawyer that's working on setting up this organization for us. We're going to need um, media managers. We're going to need an accountant. Uh, we need an oversight committee, the whole nine yards. So please feel free to either call me or send a message to the Facebook page if you or anyone you know can help with that kind of stuff. But we need to do this quickly. We're looking at a, a date of around Halloween before this stuff is really in, entrenched and ingrained and, and possibly made into law. The Alberta government right now Instead of sticking up for people and their choices of what to do with their bodies medically, they're looking into the legality of forcing vaccinations in the workplace. That's insane. Federal election. This is the last thing before the big one. Our federal election is coming up right away. Uh, it's another slimy, weaselly move by, uh, what did uh, Roger Hodgkinson call him? Mr. Fancy Socks. It's a distraction. This is a huge distraction uh, uh, to, to turn our, our minds away from what's going on in the background, which is forced vaccinations. We haven't done it before, and, and we're try they're trying to do it now, and they're using an election as a distraction. I've spoke about this numerous times. There's always distractions uh, from what, what's important, uh, what, what's going on that's important in the world. This election, I think Trudeau made a big mistake. Um, the reason I think that is because I know that there are hundreds of thousands of people across Canada who have woken up to the, the, to the illusion, to the, to the, the fakeness of this current Liberal government. They know that they're pandering. They know that they're they don't know what they're doing, um, and they're gonna they're gonna lash out with their votes. Nova Scotia just elected a conservative government provincially. Pretty sure they're gonna elect a conservative government federally as well. Um, people also ask me who I'm gonna vote for. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you who I'm gonna vote for. It's none of your business. But I will tell you that my vote will be for the elected or the, the representative in my area who would best stand up for Albertans and Canadians and ensure that their voices are heard regarding their rights and freedoms. Um, I'm not even going to touch on vote splitting or anything like that. I know there's, uh, there's two more parties, two more conservative parties right now that are in the running and, uh, uh, they both have great things to say. Unfortunately, they don't have uh, they don't have representatives in every electoral district yet, which is concerning. Um, they just don't have time to do it. But get involved in the federal election. Talk to the candidates. Find out what they're all about. Um, get to know them, and use the power of your vote to. Uh, to send a message, at the very least, to Ottawa. Okay, last but not least. The big part 
of, pardon me, the, uh, the keystone, the driving factor to every single business across Canada is people. If businesses don't have people, they can't do business. I've seen that. Uh, we have a tough time with labor and staff at the whistle stop. We have a very small labor base. It's a tough job and, and it's not for everybody. Um, it's hard when you can't find people. September 1st, we're going to show all of these employers who think that they can force people to do things to their body that they don't agree with. We're going to show them that they don't have the power over us. We have the power. We, as people, are the most valuable resource in the country. So on September 1st, if you are fighting back against uh, a forced vaccination in order for you to work, if you've already been vaccinated and you don't agree with what employers are doing, call in sick. September 1st, sick day. And stay sick until your employer or employers around the country wake up and listen. It's not an easy choice to make, but it makes it a little bit easier when your employer tells you that they're going to fire you if you don't do it. So why not put up a fight? Why not fight for your friends and neighbors? I'm going to. I'm not affected by the vaccine mandate personal yet, but I will be because it'll be uh, first it'll be we're going to allow employers to make you get vaccinated in order to stay working for them. Then it's going to be um, you have to be vaccinated to go to that store. Then it's going to be, oh, Mr. Scott, you have to be vaccinated to serve customers in your restaurant. Otherwise, AHS is going to come in the door and they're going to fine you and give you summonses. And then when you don't comply, they're going to chain your doors shut and throw you in jail because you won't get a vaccination. If you don't believe me, just look back over what's happened in the last uh, uh, year or two. We would have never thought, actually, no, we did. And we did say these vaccine passports and mandates were coming. But the majority of people would have never thought that the government would allow employers to force medical procedures on their employees um, under threat of uh, dismissal. So call me a conspiracy theorist all you want about the other points that I just made about forcing vaccinations to go into a store and then trying to force me to get a vaccination to serve people, chaining my restaurant shut, throwing me in jail. They will do that. I guarantee it. Unless we stand up and fight back. It's time to be organized. It's time to be unified. Hell, we don't even have to be unified. All we have to do is cooperate. All we have to do is share information like this. September 1st is the day. September 1st is the day we're going to show these employers and these government idiots that we're not going to tolerate this anymore. I used to be able to boost these posts and share them all over the world. Um, I can't do that anymore because Facebook changed the rules. So please, do me a favor. Uh, do your friends and those who, are, uh, who have an impending dismissal because they won't get a vaccination. Do them a favor and share this as far as you can. Share it with your family or your friends overseas. Everywhere. Everybody needs to know this. Believe it or not, there's people in Australia, uh, New Zealand, Ireland... Uh, Great Britain that are cheering us on in Canada. They're watching Alberta. They're watching what we're doing. Um, they're having a hard time at home too. They know that because of people in Alberta standing up, we're going to set the stage for what the rest of the world does. Don't let this opportunity go by. Be a Canadian. Be an Albertan. Stand up for what's right. Use your voice and fight back. Your freedoms weren't won for you indefinitely when your forefathers fought. They gave you the opportunity. Now you need to take that opportunity, you need to take up the battle, and you need to bring it home. If not for you or for me, 
or your friends? What about your kids? We've got governments setting up vaccination clinics in schools. Um, we have them luring children to vaccination clinics with ice cream and candy, telling them that they don't need parental consent to get a medical procedure done to them. Even those of you who hate me, I, I don't think that you you agree with that. Because if it's this topic now with my children, it's going to be something different on another day and another time with your children. And I'll fight for that too. I don't care if you hate me. It doesn't make any difference to me. What you feel about me doesn't change my, my path. It doesn't change um, what I'm going to do. So love me, hate me, whatever. Pay attention to what's going on. Stand up for what's right and take our country back. Enough is enough. <sighs> Anybody notice what time it is on that clock back there? Yeah. 9-1. September 1st. Could be one of the most important days this year. Okay. Well, I'm going to look at some questions here. It is uh, 8.40. I'll go another 15 minutes, and then I got to um, pull the pin. I have to open the restaurant in the morning. So let's see what we got here. September 1st is an important day. The Canadian frontline nurses have organized a walkout event. Enough is enough. Awesome. Nurses, doctors, all of you, AHS workers, those of you that don't want to get the vaccination and are going to be are being threatened to be fired for this, we're here for you too. I don't care if if uh, it was you who put a chain on my door. I don't care if it was you who took the beer out of my cooler and stole it from me. I don't care if it was you who handed me a uh, summons. I don't care if it was you who arrested me and put me in the back of a cop car. If you don't want this vaccination, if you don't agree with what's going on here, we're fighting for you too. We're not unified in our ideals, but we're going to cooperate on this for sure. If you feel like you can't for work or whatever, reach out. We need to band together. That is absolutely true. Here's a great one from Stefan. Oh, no, I lost it. Oh, there it is. My employer does not require and never will willingly, and I'm, I'm assuming vaccinations. However, I'm never vaccinating nor agree with passports or the rest of all this BS. Let's stand together. Yes. We have to return to the days of the wild, wild west. Oh. oh. It's hard to go through the comments here. So I caught most of that, and I think what the, what the person was saying is we have to return to the days of the wild, wild west where um, children were schooled, homeschooled where their uh, with their parents' support and participation. Um, it didn't look like it was a wild, wild west like, you know, what you see in the movies. Vaccine passports. We are marching starting September... Uh, sorry, the comments are going so fast. I can't even, I can't even read them. We have to try and keep our personal feelings out of this. Yes, uh, when it comes to cooperating with people that you don't necessarily agree with, you need to keep your feelings out of it. But you need to keep your head in it, um, and that means maybe the person that you have to cooperate with. Uh, you, you don't want to be a unified body with them, but uh, when it comes to achieving a common goal, it is definitely in everybody's best interest to cooperate. Oh. Uh, oh, someone just asked about possibly losing the restaurant. Well, the, the reality is, um, if I can't work um, and earn money 
at my restaurant and keep it going. It's a full-time job. Owning a place like that, you always have to be there. If I can't, there is a possibility that it's not going to survive. But I, I don't really care. There's more important things to do. Will you run in politics? Yes, I will. I have been vaccinated and am yet on your side on this as the ramifications are far-reaching. Thanks, Jason. Okay, if you guys have questions or comments, try and get them up right now. I'll just try and get them as they go by, but really, they're going pretty fast. <clears throat> yes, exactly, Chris. We can't afford to think with our emotions anymore. There's just too much at stake. Absolutely. And if the government hadn't had an emotional response to something that required a logical response in the first place, we, we wouldn't be in this situation. Um, there's another thing we can, we can ask our elected officials. Why are we allowing the College of Physicians to silence treatment options for COVID because they're not tested and gone through trials? Now, I'm specifically, I'm talking about ivermectin, vitamin D, and zinc, which has shown across the globe in other countries to be a very, very uh, effective treatment for COVID. In Canada, if you have COVID, you go to the hospital, they tell you, yeah, you have COVID, go home, come back when you get sick. By the time you come back, you're sick. When you have to go to the hospital um, and be admitted to the ICU, you're sick, like death's door sick. Um, so why aren't we treating it? Other countries do. Ivermectin has been used for 35 years. And as far as I know, maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, there haven't been any adverse, re adverse effects. Kids rub Ivermectin cream on, uh, on, the cat, on their, on their uh, animals' backs on farms. They've been doing it for years. They don't get sick. From it. As a matter of fact, farm kids are historically more healthy than the rest of us. So why aren't we using it? Why are we allowing an organization like the College of Physicians to suppress uh, health options that may be more effective in, uh, in, in, in keeping our health um, better? That's a question we should all be asking. This is not about pro or anti-vaccination. It's about fighting for the retention of our rights and freedoms. It's as simple as that. Absolutely. And I'm not anti-vax. I am anti-this-vax because I don't feel like I need it. Um, I'm not concerned about COVID. I'm not, I'm not concerned about getting it. Uh, I'm fine with my chances of getting COVID and surviving. And I don't want to take a vaccine that hasn't had an effective trial. Simple. Chris, why does the PM think we don't need to have a monetary policy? Is he daft? Yes, he is daft. Nobody knows what he's thinking because he doesn't think. I'm sure he has a couple of monkeys or maybe just one monkey in that head of his clashing symbols around just like Homer Simpson in The Simpsons. Um, he is absolutely daft. Should we go to a vet for treatment? Ah, interesting question. Um, obviously, I can't give you medical advice on where to go for treatments. But I can tell you this. There are people in Alberta and across Canada that have received treatment. Not a vaccine, not hospitalization, but treatment for COVID from licensed doctors. Now, these are doctors that would likely lose their job if it ever came out that they did this. So yes, you absolutely can receive treatment for COVID in Canada. You just have to do it underground, like prohibition. Um, to stay healthy in Canada right now and to access healthcare options that we prefer, we have to do it underground. So someone here says COVID-19 has never been verified can't demand a job for something that doesn't exist. That is a very, very dangerous statement. <clears throat> and I'll tell you why. COVID-19 uh, absolutely does exist. It has been isolated. Um, you can see pictures of it under an electron microscope. We see its effects. Um, it absolutely 100% does exist. Do, uh, I don't believe it was a big conspiracy built by whoever to um, wipe out the world and bring on a great reset. I do believe 
that the people who see this utopian future ahead where uh, everybody has to fall in line for the greater good, I believe they're very opportunistic. And when the opportunity came, they seized it. Like I said before, well organized. So, no, it wasn't proven in court that COVID doesn't exist. Yes, COVID does exist. The response and the uh, 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 mandates in, er, pardon me, the, the mandates and restrictions in response to COVID don't make sense. And the reason I say it's very dangerous to say that COVID doesn't exist is because if you, if you go around telling people COVID doesn't exist, um, why fight? Why bother getting off your couch? Why bother using your voice? It's been proven COVID doesn't exist, so we're good. No, we're not good. COVID does exist. The laws and uh, uh, the Public Health Act that allowed this stuff to happen in the first place still exists. Nothing has changed. Remember that. Nothing has changed yet. We can make it change, but it hasn't yet. So don't stop fighting. Australia stands with you. Protect your kids by whatever means you have to. Absolutely. And for those of you watching from Australia, I like my heart goes out to you. I've seen some of the things that are happening there, um, and it is absolutely disgusting, especially to see that in a Commonwealth country. Um, I, I really, I, I hope that you guys can round up enough support and enough loud voices that you can push back and turn the tides on this too. Ivermectin is available on the shelf in Mexico. Yes, it is. How do we get to Mexico? We're going to need a vaccine to fly there. Maybe now is the time to go to uh, Mexico on vacation. Check your local UFA. Ah, so farm supply stores have been directed not to sell ivermectin. At least the ones that I know about. Uh, even if you get a prescription from your doctor, <clears throat> if your doctor is all about treatment and not about um, um, the, the agenda, and he, prescri he or she prescribes you ivermectin, the pharmacist has been, um, has been told to not dispense it. You can't get it even with a prescription. And that's the College of Physicians doing that. Maybe we should be asking them why. Someone on here said something about making homemade stuff. I don't, oh man, I don't recommend that at all. There was a couple in the United States who tried to make their own, um, what's it called, uh, HCQ, hydroxychloroquine or whatever. And they ended up, the, the, the husband ended up dying because they didn't know what they were doing. They tried to make their own drugs in their own home and it went terribly wrong. So please, please do not try and mix your own drugs at home. That is a bad idea. <clears throat> you do not need a PCR test or the VAX to travel to Mexico. Great news. You have to know a guy to get ivermectin. It can be done. Yes, it sure can. <sighs> I think Facebook is messing with the video quality. This is nonstop interruption. No, I'm sorry. It's not Facebook. I don't think it's Facebook. It's my internet connection. Rural internet is absolutely terrible. <clears throat> yes, we need to question why they are refusing those who are sick treatments. Absolutely. Ask your doctor. Find out what your doctor says about this. Ask your doctor what they think about them using ivermectin and treatments in other countries. Um, if they give you some hogwash about it not being proven safe, I would get another doctor. That's another thing where we can use our power as, as the most valuable resource. If your doctor doesn't want to treat you effectively and they want to push a vaccine or they want to push hospitalization instead of treatment, get a new doctor. Jeez. These guys are driving around in Maseratis and Porsches and, and they're, and they're, oh. They're supposed to be making sure, number one, they do no harm and they make and they make sure we're healthy. And they're not. 
Uh, as you know, I've had my shots, but I'm absolutely horrified as what is happening in BC today. We have to show our papers now. What's next, a tattoo? This is so wrong. I support your right to make the decision right for you. Yeah, thank you. And I'll tell you right now, BC, BC government, BC businesses, we're coming for you too. Because what you're doing is disgusting. Dr. Henry, you are the worst thing to happen to British Columbia since Horgan and the NDP. And we're coming for you. I'm just going to I'm just going to take an opportunity to recap on something I said before. <clears throat> Number 1. You're not alone. If you're feeling pressured to take this vaccine and you don't want to, if you're feeling like you have to take it because your employer is demanding it, if you're feeling like you're going to be a second-class citizen because you don't take a vaccine, you are not alone. There are hundreds of thousands of us across Canada and across the world who are ready and willing to stand with you. Um, for the most part, we're quiet people. We don't generally stand up and speak about, out about this stuff, but we're there. So in your communities, in your cities, at your workplaces, start networking. Seek each other out, talk to each other, and stand together. We're the most valuable resource and the most powerful force in this country. Use it. Use it on September 1st. Send a message to the government. Send a message to employers and big corporations who are pushing this mandate. Send a message that if you're going to do this to us and try and create uh, a divided two-class society because you think that you can tell us what to put in our bodies, we're going to hit you where it hurts and that's in your pocketbook. It's been done before. We can do it again. Mark it on your calendars, September 1st. Don't even leave your house. Pretend we're under a lockdown. I think some of you still are, so it shouldn't be that hard. Don't buy anything. Don't go anywhere. Don't go to work. Shut everything down and send a crystal clear message that we're not going to stand for this. I'm hoping uh, towards the end of next week to have some information up and, and have our organization registered. Um, with a little bit of luck, we're going to have council retained. I don't know how long it's going to take to to raise funds for that. But uh, for all you out there that are just saying, or, I, I know the comments are going to be coming. Oh, there is Chris asking for money again. I'm not asking for money for me. I'm asking to fundraise, to build a team so we can fight back against this for everybody. Um, a completely separate registered entity with the sole purpose of defending people who want to make these choices for themselves. So I'm hoping to have that up next week. And as soon as I do, I'll put it up there and we'll be going full steam ahead with that. They're not letting people <clears throat> with disabilities go to their programs if they don't have the vaccine. It's everywhere. It's not just stores. There's doctors refusing to treat people unless they get the vaccine. Fire your doctor if he does that. If your doctor says you have to do this or I'm not treating you, you're fired, doctor. Go find another one. Because there's a lot of good doctors and good people out there who won't do that to you. There are still doctors and nurses and support workers that believe in personal choice. They believe in... in, in uh, proper treatment and effective treatment. Seek them out. Network in your communities. Find each other and stand up. If we could do anything, I would say build an organization in every single community across Canada for the sole purpose of standing up for these people. When you build an organization with 10 to 15% of the community, you can change everything. That's not a big number. That's 15 people out of 100. I bet each and every one of you can think of 15 people right now that you could stand with on this topic. Even people that you wouldn't necessarily agree with. Anyone know if credit unions are getting on board with the mandatory Vs? If my bank 
tells me I have to have a vaccination to bank there. Um, they can kiss my million and a half dollars a year goodbye. I know it sounds like a big number, but really, a million and a half dollars in a convenience store and restaurant, that's not a lot of money. What's the best way to help you from a distance? I'm over an hour away. The best way to help at this point is share this information with everybody. Share it on every platform. I don't care if you download it, screenshot it to YouTube. Um, any one of you watching right now, I give you permission to use this video in any way you can, unless you want to put a cat face on me and turn me into a TikTok video. Please don't do that. Also, please don't change what I'm saying. Um, I say what I say, whether or not you like it, and you have to live with that. So share it. Get the information out as far and wide as you can. There's 45,000 people on our Facebook page, so that's a pretty good start. Um, our highest viewership on any live stream that I've done is just over a million people. There's 30 million people in Canada. We need to reach as many people as possible. I, oh, I lost it. That was an important one. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll, I'll find it. Just give me a second here. I am literally afraid. I've had clots and suffered strokes and heart problems. Got out of a wheelchair one year ago. I'm worried for myself and my three children. I had to buy oxygen just to be able to wear a stupid mask. I'm so sorry for everyone suffering. Thank you, Chris, for standing up for us. I really do appreciate you. You're welcome. And thank you for using your voice. Thank you for getting through all this garbage and uh, I, I see who you are and supporting us on our page. Um, when people like you who have really suffered due to this stand up and speak out and share your stories, it means a lot and it makes a big impact in people's lives. So don't stop. I agree. Something needs to be done ASAP. I'm in Ontario and most of the so-called government officials are brainwashed and hopeless. Fire them! There's too much government in Ontario. One in, what is it, one in ten people in Ottawa work for the government. Fire them. Elect people who believe in reducing government. Fire them all. Seek out your, your candidates in your area that believe in and choice, that believe in personal responsibility, that believe in effective government. Hold them to account. If you have to, start a brand new party that, that where that's the goal, is to get rid of government. You do not need 10% of the population of a city to be government workers. We don't need as much government as we do in Canada. Put them on notice and fire them. You have the power to do it. If any one of us did as shitty a job as our, our elected officials do at our jobs, we would be fired and they should be no different. As a matter of fact, you should start asking the question, um, why are you allowed to, uh, your elected representatives, why are you allowed to enact laws that benefit you? Why are our elected officials allowed to make laws that make more government, that give them pay raises, that give them uh, better pensions, why are they allowed to do that? Why isn't that a referendum? That should be me and you making those decisions. We are their employers. They're not, we're not their subjects yet. So as we go into the federal election and some provincial elections across the country, ask that question and support those candidates who believe in limiting government. I am so sick of the radio host DJs pushing the vax. Tony, if I have to hear you laugh on the radio one more time at people who choose not to get vaccinated, I will make it my life's mission to build a better radio station that doesn't laugh at people and put them down 
who who the DJs don't agree with. I am sick of that. I'll tell you right now, every single time I hear that on the radio locally, I change the channel. If people aren't listening to you on the air, you're going to get fired. So you better watch it. And you're on notice too. The media, you are on notice. We see what you're doing. We see you trying to create division between us. We see you trying to push um, and toe the line for the government who coincidentally um, gives you billions of dollars through the Canadian Media Fund. We see it and we're not going to put up with it. You know what we're going to do? We're going to elect representatives that are going to tear that shit down. We're going to elect representatives who completely castrate stuff like the Canadian Media Fund that allows a government to push an agenda by funneling money to the media. You're supposed to have journalistic integrity, and we're not going to take this anymore. Your ratings are dropping. We're moving to other media. So you better pay attention, because pretty soon it's going to be your job on the line. And not because of a vaccine. It's because you're doing a shitty job. Shut the radio off if you can't pull a fuse. Yeah. I don't watch the news at all. I do watch the news. I want to see what they're doing. What radio station are you referring to, Chris? I will take action on that. Well, it's a local station in Red Deer. Uh, I'm not going to say which station it is, but just pay attention. Listen to what they're saying. Uh, next time you hear a DJ saying, oh, well, I want to go to a hockey game. I'll just get a vaccination. If they don't want to go, then there's just room for me. Ha, 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 ha. Phone the radio station. They're discriminating against people because of their, uh, because of their medical choices. They would probably get fired if they were laughing at people in wheelchairs or people with disabilities um, or people with a communicable disease. Why are they allowed to make fun of and laugh at and try and push um, those of us that don't want to get vaccination or vaccinated into following suit with them? It's garbage. Oh, yeah, you picked up on that. <laughs> Okay, so somebody knows what radio station it is. And uh, to be clear, I don't actually have a problem with the, the people themselves. I have a problem with the message that they're putting out through the media. They're supposed to have some, uh, they're supposed to not be biased. They're supposed to um, give us the news and tell us about music. They're not supposed to be pushing us towards a medical procedure. Okay, well, uh, it's 9 o'clock. <clears throat> I got to work in the morning. So I'm going to have to pull the pin here. But uh, thank you all very much for watching. And if you don't remember anything from this video, remember this. You're not alone. You're the most important resource we have. You're, most, you're, you're more important than any other uh, a resource we have in Canada and you have power to enact change all you have to do is stand up oh and share this <laughs> share this video we need as many people as possible to see it um, the more people standing with us the more powerful we are anyway as the clock says behind me 9-1, probably the most important day this year. Stand up. Actually, no, sit down on your couch. Don't do anything. Don't buy anything. Call in sick to work. And we're going to make a difference. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Uh, love you all, and we'll see you next time.